Niks Vujičiķ dzimis Austrālijā 1982. gadā. Viņu vecāki – imigranti no toreiz sociālistiskās Dienvidslāvijas. Niks piedzim bez kājām un bez rokām – reta ģenētiska slimība. Bērnībā pārdzīvojas pāridarīšanas skolā, dziļu depresiju un pašnāvības mēģinājumu, taču Niks atrada motivāciju dzīvot tālāk. Nikam ir pēda ar diviem pirkstiem ar to pamazām iemācījās balansēt ķermeni, peldēt, nirt, spēlēt golfu, rakstīt. Pabeidz augstskolu kļūst par uzņēmēju evaņģēlistu uzrunā lielas auditorijas konferencēs universitātēs cietumos, lai stāstītu par motivāciju un ticību saviem mērķiem. Bieži uzstājas skolās, aicina pārtraukt emocionālu vardarbību, mobīngu, daloties ar savu personīgo pieredzi. There was this one bully, I became his target for three weeks. And every time I go by him, I was 13, he was 17. I was in my chair, I'm only four foot nine in my other chair, my old chair. He's like six something, so he's huge, right? So I'm looking up at him, and every time I go by him, he's like, Hey, there's Nick, he has no... And you can imagine what he said. And I'm like, what's his problem, man? So I would try to avoid him and I was so embarrassed, he would say it really loud and everybody would be looking and some would be laughing. I'm like, what is this guy's problem, man? So one day after three weeks, I went up to him and I said, hey. He's like, hey. I said, can you please stop it? He said, stop what? I said, stop teasing me. He said, what are you talking about? I said, every time I walk by, you say that stuff. He's like, what stuff? He didn't know how to take me on. So I'm looking at him and said, no, nah, man. Every time I walk by, you say exactly this, and I want you to stop. I forgive you, but stop it. He's like, oh, is that hurting you? Now I could have said, nah, or I could have said, yeah. It takes a level of humility to actually say, um, actually, I don't like that. It's, it's killing me. And he said, uh, yeah, it's hurting me. He said, all right, I'm sorry, man. I was just, you know, playing around. He said, give me a hug. He said, what? I said, give me a hug. He was like, all right. So I gave him a hug. I'm a hugging machine. We hugged the, we, we made the Guinness Book of World Records. 1,749 hugs in one year. We did it last year. My arms fell off, all right. <laughs> the scary thing about hugging so many people is that anyone can just pick me up and take me home, all right. <laughs> like, what am I gonna do? Like, poosh, eat him or something? Like that. Pretty mean headbutt, right? 2002. gadā Niks pārcēlās uz ASV un tur satika Kanaē. Abu ģimenē no jau četri bērni – divi puikas un divas meitenes – dvīnītis. Niks Vujačičs sarakstīs astoņas grāmatas ar iedvesmojošām runām turpina apceļot pasauli. We're all human beings. Please don't get me wrong, I don't wake up every morning with a smile on my face like, Hi everybody! I have ups and downs. You see my foot? Ups and downs, ups and downs. The first thing I want you to take away from today is this. You will have good days and you'll have bad days, but you will always learn something more or something new, and you will learn more overall on bad days than good days. You will learn more about yourself. You'll learn more about relationships. You'll learn about life and principles, and it'll build your character. If you're a person who wants to, let's say, improve on your character of patience, let's say, don't complain when you're waiting in a line. You ain't going to grow in patience until you're put in a place to wait. It's like you go into a gym and, you know, you're walking through the front doors and, you know, you tell your wife or your husband, I'm going to the gym. You go into the gym and you come in three feet and you do a U-turn and you ride out, I went to the gym. Ain't gonna do nothing. You gotta go in there. What are you gonna do? You gotta pick up the weights and you exercise the muscles that you wanna build. I stand before you without arms and legs, but a very strong man because of the bad days in my life. You know how it is. 
If you didn't go what you've gone through, you wouldn't be who you are today. Latvijas televīzijai bija iespēja intervēt Niku pēc viņa pēdējās uzstāšanās Polijas galvaspilsētā Varšavā. Nick, uh, hello. And hello. it's pleasure to have you on Latvian TV program One to One. Uh, so we're now here in Warsaw. I know that uh, yesterday you were giving a speech at the conference uh, uh, last night, early morning, uh, this interview, and I know other journalists are queuing. It's quite a tough schedule, <laughs> right? It is, it is, yep. yeah. But it's, it's, it's like a routine or exception, like you're on a tour. You know, it's been a lifestyle that I've had for 20 years and uh, traveling and speaking and letting people know that there is hope and to never give up. Uh, it's been a sacrifice. Um, and especially over, you know, the last three years, it went to zero. Um, and so I've been thinking about what does it look like, you know, the next season of life. And I've got four kids. Yeah. A 10-year-old, a seven-year-old, and twin girls who are five. And uh, I want to be home. And uh, Latvia, actually, is one of the last countries I'm going to. And in autumn, so, in this autumn, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I want people to know that there is hope. But um, I want everyone to know that, yeah, it's been a rigorous schedule. Um, 78 countries. Um, and I want people to know that there is hope, but at the same time, I want to be home. So there's a new version of my life coming um, on TV, on documentaries, on film. And I want people to know um, that, uh, you know, there is, there is a strength that we all can have when we don't give up. Since you've never been in Latvia, I would like to ask questions from the beginning, actually. You were yeah. born this way, without limbs, yes. Yes, right? Yes. Uh, tell your story, please. Yeah, I was born in 1982, and uh, no doctor can tell me why I was born this way. And uh, my mum and dad, they, uh, they were married for five years before they had me. And... Um, they had no idea that I was going to be born this way. My mum was a, a, a nurse, and so she knew a, about midwifery and pregnancies and uh, actually the head of the, the department of the birth suites in Melbourne, Australia. And when she had ultrasounds, um, she actually had no idea that I was going to be born this way. Um, she was so excited uh, to see me that they never checked that I had arms and legs. And so when I was born, it was such a shock. And my mom and dad, they cried. Um, they grieved. Um, they grieved about the son that they never had. Um, having no arms and legs, obviously, was a challenge. Um, a challenge for them to look at the future and say, is he ever going to be independent? Is he ever going to go to school? Um, and the doctor said that I'd never walk. Little did they know that this little kid uh, would become independent and learn how to fish and surf and skydive and swim. Um, and my mom, she had a courage, a tenacity, um, that at that time in 1989 in Australia, uh, the law was such that I would not be able to go to school. Um, and so she went to the government and said, why? Why cannot my son go to a normal school? And so they changed the law. And when you look at my parents, many people think maybe that I came from a wealthy family. I didn't. Uh, my mom and dad actually were in refugee camps fleeing from former Yugoslavia. And they went to Australia with nothing. And they always told me, you have no arms and legs, but you were given a brain. Use your brain and see what you do have and do your best. And that 
drive was given to me by my parents. And uh, it was definitely difficult, you know, going to school. I knew that I had no arms and legs. I knew that I was different. But I didn't think it was such a big deal until I went to school. Um, kids would tease me and bully me and laugh at me. Uh, some kids would not play with me. And uh, it was difficult, you know, when I asked my parents, like, why? Why did this happen? And they had no answer. But they said, it's okay. You're beautiful just the way that you are. And parents so told you, you are parents, beautiful. My parents. Yeah. And that gave me hope. That gave me peace. That gave me strength. And uh, for me, I didn't know what the future held. But at that time, the love of my parents helped, helped, helped me to go through those times. Yeah, yeah I, I know that uh, at age of eight, you were about to commit suicide. Yeah. yeah, at age eight, I thought about giving up. And at age 10, I attempted suicide. Uh, in a bathtub, tried to drown myself in 10 centimeters of water or 15 centimeters of water. And uh, I wanted to give up. I didn't think that I'd ever be happy. Never thought I'd be independent. Uh, I felt like I was a burden to my parents. Um, never thought I'd get married uh, and have you know, a normal life. Um, and here I am today, 40 years old, and uh, married for 11 years and four kids and traveling the world and talking about something I never thought I had, which is hope. And so I want people to know that miracles happen. Yeah, how did you meet your wife and where? Ah, I met her in uh, Texas. Uh, it was love at first sight. She was at a speaking engagement. It was a very small, intimate group, actually, about maybe 15 people. And um, uh, it was about the nonprofit organization that we had. And she came with her boss. And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and it was love at first sight. Good, and now you have four children. Yes. And what do you like to do together? We Most swim, we fish. You see my tan on my skin? <laughs> uh, we go boating. And uh, in Texas, we have a, a, a property out in the forest. And so I love to be outdoors. And so we go fishing and boating and swimming, uh, watching movies with my family. Um, just want to be with them more and more. Yeah, you said about uh, uh, committing suicide, but uh, what was the turning point when you realized that I can cope, I love life? At age 13, I loved soccer, and I was playing soccer, and I hurt my little foot, and I couldn't walk for about three weeks. And I was in bed, and looking at the ceiling, and realizing I have a choice, either to be angry for what I do not have, be thankful for what I do have. And I realized that I got to be thankful for my little foot, thankful for my family, um, for the fact that I have a home. My parents always told me about the poor people who have no home, who have no food, who have no water. And I didn't understand what that meant. But when I lost my ability to walk for three weeks, I realized that I need to be thankful. And uh, so that was the first turning point. At age 15, though, um, I had a spiritual experience um, where I realized that God had a plan for me. And um, I read in the Bible about a man that was born blind. No one knew why he was born that way. And many people don't know why I was born this way. And so I related to that story. And uh, Jesus healed him. And I have a pair of shoes in my closet, just in case it gives me arms and legs. And I've seen miracles. I've seen many things. Um, in 78 countries, Latvia is going to be the 79th. Um, I've met a lot of people. And I've heard a lot of stories. Um, and I know there's a spiritual realm for people who don't believe in God because of Christians or don't believe in God because of a different religion. Um, I'll say for me, uh, believing in God changed my life. And I realized that if he gave me arms and legs, that would be great. If he doesn't give me arms and legs, it'd be great. Um, why? Because heaven is real. 
And uh, I want people to know that my hope, my purpose, my strength, my endurance is because I know that there is a life after death. And uh, many people look at me and say, wow, you're so positive. Well, if you never die, you'll be positive. And uh, I want people to know uh, that there is hope for this life, um, that you're broken pieces. I never tell people that I understand their pain. I believe it's worse being, it's worse being in a broken home than having no arms and legs. And you can have arms and legs, but have a broken life. And I want people to know um, my story, not because I'm the inspiration, because we all go through ups and downs. In 2021, I went through depression. I went through counseling. Um, and there were times of fear, depression, and anxiety that I think everyone went through over the last couple of years. And I want people to know to take one day at a time, to have an attitude of gratitude. You can always be thankful for what you have. And so that was the one and two steps of being thankful and then faith uh, that really changed my life. That's cool. On, on your website, um, one can find your self-formulated um, statement of faith, and you called it Born Again Christianity. I mean, what makes your approach different from some older traditions? <laughs> uh, you know, what it means? It's a good question. So um, when I come to Latvia, I'll be talking about motivation and never giving up. But when we talk about faith, um, for me, there are many people who never become a Christian because of Christians. And so there are many people who say they love God, who say they're a Christian, but they don't forgive. Um, they don't live a life that really is generous or kind. Um, and so first and foremost, I'm a human, we're all human. And uh, we know that when we love God, it doesn't mean that we're perfect but we strive to be who he wants us to be. For me, when you look at maybe, I don't know, let's talk about atheists for a second. They're the minority of the minority who don't believe in a higher power, maybe two or three percent, maybe five percent these days, who don't believe in a higher power. Well, I've seen demons and I've seen miracles. Um, and I, <laughs> I can tell you right now, I believe in God. Um, I've had even a, a, a miracle in my own back. Uh, in my spine, I had a syrinx, which is a disease where the, bo the bone of my spinal cord turns into fluid. And uh, they told me at age 19 that at age 35, I would have no back. And they couldn't slow it down, they couldn't reverse it, and I have no more holes in my back. And so I've seen miracles. People have different religions. And I'm going to say that I love everyone. I do love everyone. But I know why I'm not Islam. I know why I'm not Buddhist or Shinto. Um, I've done my research. And when you place me, a man without arms and legs, into some of those religions, um, it's really based on works. How good are you? How good can you be before you hope that you can actually go into a place that you hope exists? Some of the religions say, well, if you kill a Christian, then you certainly will go home. Home. To kill someone, that doesn't make sense. Some religions do good, be good, and good will happen. But we know that you can be good and do good, but bad happens. And so for me, um, when you read the Bible, most of the people say, how can a loving God allow a bad thing to happen? How can a loving God who can do all things not give you a miracle? And when you read the Bible, you realize that pain and sickness and disabilities was not his perfect plan. 
and there is an enemy. But what the enemy tried to use for bad, he can turn into good. That's possible. And that's possible. You said you, you, haven't see, you, you have seen uh, demons. It means you don't like books about Harry Potter and witchcraft, <laughs> right? No, I don't read about those books, no. No, okay. So you, you, you won't comment on those kind of books. No. Children like those books, you know? Yeah, no, I, I don't really look at those books, no. <laughs> but you have written and you have published many books yes. uh, written by yourself. Yes. Just how do you do? How do you write books? You do it yourself? Yeah, so I type with my foot and okay. I, can, I can type. Um, and for many of the books, I had a ghostwriter. So he'd sit me down. His name's Wes. And uh, we've done about five books together. And uh, he would ask me questions, like an interview, actually. And he would type while I'm speaking. And uh, so we've, we've done a couple books together. And, um, you know, I know that books change people's lives. Um, I think the books that we have now um, have been translated into 36 languages. And so uh, we're, we're, we're thankful that hope should be translated in every single language, um, especially now, you know, especially young people who are depressed, who are anxious, uh, who have thoughts of suicide. Um, we want people to know um, that there is a, a purpose beyond your suffering right now. You know, many people say that we want to get books and positivity um, so that we feel good so that we think about our life in a way that uh, maybe has no struggle. But a life without struggle, a life without resistance, is a life without resilience. And I'm a person of resilience. Uh, we all go through ups and downs. Our good days get better and our bad days get, get worse. And that gap between the good days and the bad days as the good days get better and the worst days get worse, uh, that's your maturity, that's your endurance. You know, the pandemic that we all went through in the last maybe three, four years and struggles. Um, let's just say it this way, that uh, it's not the first global crisis and it's not the last. And so when you understand that you can't have resilience without resistance. Um, you become stronger. Um, and when you give your children everything they want, when they want it, how they want it, they're not resilient. They're actually having this mentality of entitlement and pride and greed and self-centeredness um, in how I feel, in who I am, instead of a global perspective of understanding that we all are here for a greater purpose to make the world a better place. And so in that, um, that's the way I was raised. We all have ups and downs. We all have uh, um, even times of trouble where many people think of me as a superhero. I'm not. Um, I actually had to go through counseling in 2021 and I wanted people to hear that we all go through struggles. We all need to talk to people sometimes about what we feel, what we're going through, um, what our mental struggles are sometimes. And um, I want people to know that together in, in Latvia, um, that if more Latvians uh, help more people in the country. That's when we're stronger. Many people look at America and they think that it's paved with gold. It is not. It is not. It is not. Uh, we're going through a big, big struggle right now of freedom, of capitalism. And um, socialism is coming pretty bad, pretty quick. And uh, for me, um, <laughs> my parents fled Yugoslavia yes. for freedom in Australia and I came to California for opportunity. California is not California anymore. It's not. And when you look at the country of America where it's so driven by greed, 
by lust. Um, this next generation on TikTok, on YouTube, they're so disconnected from social aspects and networks and friendship that unfortunately um, suicide is rampant. Um, it's never been this bad in this country. Never been this bad. And so I want people to know in Latvia that it's not about going to a new country or having a different kind of life. Um, for me, I used to think as a kid, if I just had arms and legs, then I'd be happy. But you meet many people with arms and legs and they're not happy. And so it's the condition of the heart and, and the fear and the mind. And so when you can become resilient, um, that's when you become successful in your life. And so just understand that no matter where you're at, um, in your season of life, to take one day at a time, be thankful and do your best. My parents always said, you can't change what you cannot change, but change what you can. And so it takes courage. It takes courage to dream. It takes courage to start a speaking career. It takes courage. Courage is not when you're afraid. Courage is when, while you're afraid, you do it. And so um, those are the lessons that my parents had taught me uh, that I want to share with the world. And one more question. You said about things you can change and can't change. Yeah. But taking in account, let's say, the war in Ukraine, there are things you can't change. A lot of right. sufferings, injuries, death. What's your reactions on to the war? And you, you see these countries, Poland has changed, Latvia has changed because you, people are, you know, suffering and thinking about the dramatic situation. You know, it is a dramatic situation. And um, this is not the first war, and this is not the last war. Um, I'm very sorry to, to know of the suffering and the tragedy that's happening right now. And I hope that the war stops. Um, for me, obviously, when you look at human nature, you have greed, you have power, you have lust. Um, right now in the world, we have enough money to make sure that no one dies of starvation. But today, we have 25,000 people dying of starvation. 55 million children who are enslaved in sexual slavery, human trafficking. Um, we can go on and on about the, the problems of the world. And I never tell people that I understand their pain. Um, I would be naive. I would be insensitive. I don't know what war looks like. My parents do, but I don't. So we hope that war stops. We hope for peace. Um, and in the meantime, um, may more Latvians help each other and encourage one another. Um, three ways to get out of depression is writing out a list of the things that you are thankful for. Um, reading them over your life and remembering why you're grateful. The second thing is counseling or journaling or getting out your emotions of what you're feeling to something, whether it's writing a journal or talking to somebody, it helped me. And then the third thing is to help someone else in need. Um, I think that many people underestimate the power of actually helping someone else in need. Um, and I want everyone to know that you know, when you don't get a miracle, you can still be one for someone else. And if you're a listening ear to somebody, you may not be able to even help their situation, but just hearing someone and listening to somebody, um, it can actually possibly plant a seed of hope that saves their life. Super, and very last question, Nick. Um, uh, what is happiness? And Nick, are you happy? 
I am happy. I really am happy. Actually, this is one of the last tours that I'm having, and I really want to be with my family. And um, jet lag is terrible. Um, and when you go and you, you travel and you speak with people, um, when it's 3 a.m., 2 a.m. in your own time zone, it's difficult. Um, but this is the time where, uh, in my life, um, first and foremost, my faith in God uh, helps me to, to know that every day counts and that every blessing that I have um, is so important to be grateful for. My wife, she's not just my wife, she's my best friend. Uh, my kids, they're not just my children, they're my best friends. And so when you have the richness of life, um, I'm thankful for the last 20 years that I've gone to now 78 countries, but um, going on to television and documentaries and film production, um, I want to reach the world. I'll never give up on that dream. But that means as well for me and my family, that is going to be home. And so um, this is one of the last times that I'm going to be away from home, wanting to be home. And uh, for everyone, I just want everyone to understand that every day, look your wife in the eye and tell them, you're beautiful. Tell your kids, you're beautiful. Um, because in the end, it's not about the success. It's not about the measure of impact that's going to be really talked about on my funeral. It's going to be about who I am, how I made people feel. And so the question that we must have is who are we? Do we really love our wife? So when you love your wife, ask her three questions. What's something that you look in my heart and my mind? What am I doing well that you want me to keep on doing? Question number one. Question number two. What am I doing that you want me to stop doing? And question number three. What am I not doing that you want me to start doing? For me, when you look at those three questions, whether it's in marriage or fatherhood or business, you can actually make an improvement. Many people play the victim card. And I'm happy because I don't play the victim card. I take responsibility. And you do your best, and God does the rest. Nick, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And see you soon in Latvia. Yeah, <laughs> I look forward to coming.